one of our main complaints with the stock talent is the ride quality. It's pretty stiff in stock form. Uh, so one of the first things we did uh, in order to combat that is to switch out the springs to a, like a shock therapy uh, spring set. This is a pretty easy do-it-yourself that you can uh, do with just a spring compressor, um, coilover compressor from your local automotive shop. Uh, once you compress the coils, that allows you to get the stock clip that's in the bottom uh, right above the eyelet, which allows you to remove the bottom spring plate, uh, slide the bottom spring plate off. Then you can loosen the coil compressor and allows you to slide the coils right off the uh, the coilover shaft, including the uh, crossover uh, slider. Uh, and then from there, it's easy to just uh, replace with uh, your new set of springs that you got from a manufacturer. But us being how we are, we wanted to go further and pull out the internals of the shock to see what the stock valving was in case we wanted to mess with that in the future. Uh, so you can see here we're drilling out the stock caps in order to uh, release the pressure. Uh, we were swapping out the stock reservoir caps uh, we actually have a video on how you can tap those yourself uh if you so desire um so that was sort of this was kind of part of that process once you release the pressure on the shock and pull the end cap out uh, that'll allow you to take a spanner and take off the oh dust God. seal, uh, wiper seal cap. There's no set screw on this, it just, but it's a pretty tight fit. So without the proper tool there, it's probably would be difficult to do yourself. Uh, and here we found out that uh, if you don't have the clickers on the uh, shock reservoir set to all the way soft, it's pretty tough to push in the uh, bottom plug that's on the the shock shaft uh but once you turn it all the way soft you can easily push that down and get the clip out that allows you to pull out the entire piston shaft and, and valving um out of the top of the shock body uh and you can do this without uh you know losing any oil and needing to replace any oil but uh once you Pull the shock sh shaft out, uh, pretty similar to other ones we've seen. The only ones we've rebuilt before are King shocks. Uh, there's a spring in this, and the piston's a little different uh, design um, compared to the King shocks that I have on my pre-runner. But uh, there's just a locking nut holding on the uh, piston and the shim stack at the top. Uh, top off washer. Then your rebound stack is on top, uh, followed by your piston. Uh, one of the interesting parts that we found on uh, the piston is there's no free bleed compared to like a king shock. Uh, I guess the, the I don't know if this is common for all foxes, um, but the free bleed is actually built into the compression stack. There's like a, a notch in the the bottom shim on the compression stack uh, that allows oil to bypass through the piston. Um, so that's uh, something that's a little different. You can see we're pointing it out here. But the main reason we wanted to, you know, go this far and pull this shock down is to potentially make, see any changes we could make in the future. Um, so we pulled everything down, mic'd everything out to figure out what the uh, compression was. Here you can see this is the stock front uh, shocks for the 2020, 2022 Talon R. Um, the rebound shim, which is on top of the piston over there on the left. Uh, the compression shim over there on the right. First thing that I guess I personally noticed is there's a, there's a lot of shims in this compared to, I guess, the King shocks. Um, there are a lot... They're, they're really thin shims, but the, there's just a significant amount more than them. Um, you can see the rebound's a pretty standard 
pyramid stack. Uh, it looks like they, there's an additional shim. So I looked this up on the Fox chart. It's a, like a number 35 Fox stack, but it looks like they added a shim at uh, the number four position there. Um, and then the compression stack um, is a flutter, flutter stack. Uh, what that is, in case you didn't know, is that right there, the fourth, sh fourth shim down from the piston, so the piston would be writing where it says compression. Um, the fourth shim down is a, a smaller, thicker, shim uh that basically allows more leverage on the shims above it uh so it makes it a little softer in your low speed uh while still having the top out capacity and the high speed and that's a pretty pretty common thing to have in just a single coil over application from from our understanding on uh, you know other other off-road shocks like uh that was how my original single coil over on the ranger was as well as that's how the coilover we have on the the Jeep TJ is is a a flutter flutter stack, uh, so that was not too surprising. But then here's the shims on the rear of the vehicle, as you can see, just overall just a boatload of shims in here. <laughs> I think usually it's like seven seven or so. Um, but one of the interesting things we found here is that there's a flutter shim on the rebound stack. Uh, so that, as far as we know, is not very common. Uh, we haven't heard that being common. Uh, we wonder if that part of that... Uh, I guess one of our main complaints with the Talon is how much it kicks uh, in the rear... Uh, and we think that might have some some things to do with it. So going forward, that's probably going to be one of the first things we do is take out that flutter shim and see how that affects the vehicle. But going forward, just uh, for the purpose of this video, we didn't change anything in the actual rebounding or the rebounder compression shims. We just wanted to, you know, get an idea on what it, our baseline we were working with here and so we could potentially make changes in the future. And I guess if anybody else is curious... Here's what the stock valving in a you know a Talon R looks like. So after checking out the valving, we put the springs back together with the new springs, and uh, I guess we did a few test shots just to see the difference. Uh, but then I guess we'll go through a you know a more thorough review here at the end of the video. All right, Talon Spring recap video. Uh, got back from Silver Lake Sand Dunes. We were there for about a week. I put about 300 miles on these shock therapy springs. Um, overall, really good upgrade, I think. Uh, definitely a lot lighter spring rates for sure, but uh, with tuning the crossovers, you can still get pretty good bottom out resistance. Uh, I was actually running this as well as a stock 2019 um, that we had recharged the shocks on and everything being similar. Uh, this one with the shock therapy springs same compression settings and all that, same ride heights, uh, rode much more stable in the whoops, much more, you know, stable on the jumps, uh, just doing a couple jump comparison videos, which I think we're going to include. Uh, it noses over a little less, uh, bucks a little less, and definitely could drive it really hard in the whoops. I was actually keeping up with some Pro R's and uh, some X3's through the whoops. Um, you know, they have more horsepower than me, but if you're willing to send it, you'll send it. So actually, this talent in the sand uh, provided you're not, you know, doing drag racing with it, uh, has plenty of horsepower to have fun and jump stuff and bomb sand whoops. And I saw 75 a couple times on the Speedo, which I think is the factory limiter. So it definitely will keep up. You know, I was trying to keep up with this thing, which is a challenge, but uh, I had a good time doing it. So 
yeah, shock therapy springs, I think worth it. Their preload settings were way wrong. Uh, so I had to adjust that, but then they just, they're a guide. So, you know, depending on your rig and what you're going to do with it. Uh, I think when I put the shock, I think when I put the springs on, I think my ride height was at like 19 inches. It was like climbing into a, a lifted Jeep. It was ridiculous. So cranked it down and got the crossover set. And uh, next to come is some valving work on these shocks. Uh, I need to get a little more rebound control out of them. And I think we'll be okay. So thank you very much. Stay tuned.